the Stallion Search Film of the Month. Brought to you by Horse Logic. Visit them at horselogicpro.com. Ricky Ramirez. If not the top quarter horse race rider in the world of modern time, he's at least one of the top three in the world at present. He is a first call rider for the powerful Blaine and Trey Wood stable, a coveted spot in quarter horse racing. He is the 2015 AQHA world champion jockey. He's a family man, a father, and someone I call a close friend. He also, at times, when not on horseback, is the class clown, just like myself. We are perpetually giving each other a hard time and joking around whenever we are breathing the same air. I give him valuable race riding advice in the paddock. Hey, go real fast. And I try to avoid his attempts at making light at some of my finer qualities. But in the saddle, he is compared to the legends of the sport. Most notably, the style and the feel of Hall of Fame jockey Jerry Nicodemus. And it's his high drive for greatness and coolness in the saddle that makes him admirable. And being his close friend and there to watch him achieve those high levels in the sport makes it all that more enjoyable. I met Ricky Ramirez at one of his favorite restaurants in Oklahoma City, just north of the racetrack called Chilinos. And the busy restaurant played host to our discussion on Dinner with Thompson. You know, we've known each other for quite some time. You kind of told me the story about how you, when you were a kid, you all you wanted to do was be a jockey. That's you didn't have any other aspirations to do anything. All you wanted to do was be a jockey. Yeah, I mean, ever since I can remember, you know, just being a jockey was a dream of mine. Uh, I grew up in a little six-acre ranch there in Odessa. My dad has. And uh, he had, he's had horses, I mean, even before I was born, we've always had horses. So that's what I grew up with, you know, that was, uh, that was my backyard, it was my dad's barn. I'd go out there and, and you know, get on the horses yeah. and, you know, that's, that's all I wanted to do. And, and, uh, you got your start in Odessa in the, on the match races. I mean, yes, they were, there, so. there was a, a match track about five to six miles south of town from where we live. And, uh, you know, we used to go there every Sunday. That that was my dad's hobby was go to the match races and, and run horses. Yeah, that's all I wanted to do was just ride the match races. My dad had a little construction business, so uh, running match races was a hobby to him. And that's where I grew up watching, you know, watching match races. And that's, that's all I ever wanted to do. And But the dream of mine was always to hit, hit the big tracks and, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully be one of the top jockeys. And, uh, you know, I, I think I've, uh, I've accomplished my dream. Brought directly to you at the barn. Horse Logic, equine supplement product scientifically formulated for the competitive horse and chosen by top professionals in the quarter horse racing world to help you achieve success. From sail fitting yearlings to putting powerful muscle growth into a runner, Horse Logic gives horsemen the advantage of proven supplements for peak performance. The hottest name in supplements in the quarter horse racing world, Horse Logic Professional. You told me the story about you were so small when you started riding at the match races that your dad had to sit on a pony at the turn and once you passed the finish line. He had to go and grab you and pull, help you pull it up because you were so small you couldn't even pull the horse up. Yeah, um, you know, he, he was kind of afraid of a horse to run off of me, but actually he had to get my older brother, you know, to, he, he was kind of my outrider. He'd sit out there at the turn and, and wait for me to, you know, hit the turn and help me pull the horses up. I was probably weighing 85 pounds, 90 pounds at the time. I was 13 years old when I rode my first match race. So, uh, you know, my dad was kind of nervous about the pulling up part. And uh, Did you win the first match race? Yes. Uh, you won your first race? Won my first, first race. Yeah. What did that feel like? Well, it was a cool experience. Uh, you know, it, it, it was a kind of a cheap race. We ran for five hundred dollars, but uh, I didn't care about the money. You know, it's just the thrill of getting to ride a race was just awesome. You grew up in Odessa. I grew up in Houston. There wasn't a whole lot of racing to be seen. I mean, only chance we really got to see racing was on ESPN and what have you. But you know, you kind of grew up wanting to, to kind of hit the big time. Where did you? Where does this come from? You know, it, it's kind of weird because I just heard of the tracks. You know, I've heard of. Names, uh, you know, Jerry Nicodemus, Jackie Martin, Jr. Carter, uh, you know, just the top riders, and you know, we, we were uh, we didn't have the money to go out there to the track and and, and see live horse racing at Redosso Downs or anything. Um, but it, I, you know, I was just here about these name riders, and I wanted to be that. Um, it, you know, it was just, it was just a, that was a dream of mine, but. Uh, I, didn't, I really didn't know anybody that could, you know, grab me by the hand and take me to the racetrack. 
No, I told you how I started the whole horse racing. How how did you become the horse racing guy? I mean, look at you. You look like the city guy. I told I mean, you. I, I used to be. You a don't jockey. look like a horseman one bit, Greg. You must, at all. You must not have seen the video where I was a jockey. I'm sure you believe that from from the get go. Oh, I try to believe it, but no, I didn't fall for it. Well, after my match race career, no, no, seriously, I, I went to college at Charleston State, and I I became an insurance agent for 13 years, and you know, for when Sam Houston first opened in, in Paramutual Racing. Came to the big pyramid racing came to Texas. I was on the thoroughbred side, so I'm actually a convert. I, I came from the thoroughbred over to the quarter horse side, and good choice. Yeah, well, good choice. <laughs> Weirdly enough, I used to always think that a quarter horse race was boring when I was at the thoroughbreds, and now I'm so tied into the quarter horses. Now, when I watch a thoroughbred race, I find that kind of boring. Say, so watch you paint dry. It's really weird. <laughs> really weird how it's transitioned into that. I mean. Uh, Started writing for magazines, uh, quit being an insurance agent, got into being a reporter, and kind of worked my way up, and, and here I am. So, hey, weren't you an agent at one time? I was an agent, that's funny. You're the, yes, you're the, yes. Were you the guy that made that Lone Star? You and I first met when I was a when I was a jockey agent, and I was going to take you down at Lone Star because you had been become the king of Lone Star. You won like every meet from then on, and so I was going to come in, and I had Gaspar Garcia. You remember? Oh, and yeah, I, I remember. Had you that was like two thousand nine, ten, something like that. I had you the whole meet, three or four wins ahead. I was I was rolling, and I and of course I was talking trash because you and I from the it seems like from the very get go from when we met we've talked trash ever since. Yeah, there's just no we just have that bond. I guess there's no letting go. <laughs> There's no letting up. And I had you three or four. Oh, I was like, I could, I was gonna get a belt buckle made. I don't even wear belt buckles. I don't. Well, four, you can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what would you put it? Make a necklace out of it? Yes, or I was gonna make it in the dagger. All right. right. <laughs> so I had you three or four wins, and then right at the la right at the last week, you just blew past us. Like I, I don't know what happened. Okay. I'm sure. I remember we better stick there. Which you still haven't paid me, by the way. I have. Every, for like five years after that, after that, every time I saw you, you would rub your belly and you go, God, I'm really waiting for that steak dinner. I was so ready to I get I was still waiting, but I got, I, tired of, so, I got tired of waiting. I was so ready to get you that steak dinner. I was, and I finally did it. So now you owe me. When? You know, it's kind of weird the way it happens. You know, I grew up watching these riders, Cody Jensen, Jared Carter, Jackie Moore, and, um, you know, I heard about Jerry Nicodemus. I didn't get to ride with him, but um, J.J. Gonzalez. I mean, all these, Freddie Martinez, all these jockeys that I, you know, grew up and, and wanted to be like them. And then, you know, just been blessed within a year or two, they were actually my rivals, you know, it was just, I was competing against my, my idols and it was just an awesome feeling, you know, I was still watching and trying to learn from them, but I wanted to beat them, you know, it, it's, it's just an awesome uh, experience. All right, now that you're the older statesman, you're the, one of the older guys in the jocks room now. I'm not that old, Greg, I'm 32 years old, come on. Well, let's face it, you are the older guy. Uh, what is it like for these guys, young kids to come and kind of seek your guidance and seek your, I guess, your advice on, on how to, to, to get to the level that you're at? Well, I try to be helpful to, you know, the new guys that are coming in because I was in their shoes at one point. So I, I try to, you know, ask for my advice or anything. I, I try to help them out the best I can. But uh, unless they ask for my advice, I really don't like to get too, you know, too much into their business when they first get here. But you know, jockeys are that way. I mean, they're competitive. I mean, yes, you, it's it's the competitive. You know, I don't want to think you're better than the other riders. I don't want to go up to them and be Mister Know It All. So you know, unless they ask for advice, I you know, I try to help them out. But I think it's just the rivalry, the competitiveness between those jockeys that a lot of times we don't want somebody else's help. So it's a, it takes a jockey for you to not act like you know, Mister Know It All. That's what you're trying to tell me. Kinda. Yeah. Yeah. I got, it. I got it. So I'll keep that in mind. I used to be a former writer. Why do you do it to me? Anyway, moving on. So, what was it like to actually find that big success at Rio for the first time? I mean, to, to win a big futurity at Rio Oh, well, it was a great feeling. I remember the race like it was yesterday. Uh, I qualified two horses for that futurity. Um, I was. I qualified two horses for that futurity. Cody Jensen rode one of them, and he outbroke me by a good half a length. And he looked like the winner. I mean, he, he was way in front. I didn't think I was going to catch him. And little by little, my feelings started coming, and I, I just barely nosed him at the wire to win the Rainbow Futurity in 2013. So it was just an awesome feeling, you know, winning my first grade one at Ridoso. And, uh, you know, after that, now I'm, I'm just 
anxious to win the All American. I mean, the You've come very close multiple times in the All American Tour. You've been very close. Uh, I think you've been finished second a couple times now. What's that drive? I mean, obviously, you, you've tried very hard to win this race. What, what's the drive to keep going and, and, and come to the mountain every single year and have that focus to obviously win the All American Tour? You know, just it, it's something on my bucket list. You know, winning winning uh, the All American. Um, I think it's any jockey's dream come true. You know, that's that's our Super Bowl. Right? Who who doesn't want to win? I mean, why why would you be in the sport if that's not your goal to win the All American? Uh, you know, we've been trying. We've had good horses. Sometimes we've had bad luck. Um, a lot of times we just got outrun, but we keep trying, and and that's our main goal every year. It's just get it ready for that big race. What horse, what two-year-old have you had that you went to post with in the All-American that you felt the most confident that you are going to get the wire in front? You know, I've had two or three that I've, I felt pretty confident, but the one that tops it off is 2009 Love Samba. She had the fastest time to the rainbow, you know, got into some bad luck in the final. Comes back and sets the fastest time for the All-American um, by a good, maybe a good length on times faster. So I, I felt really confident that she was going to get it done. But then again, we had bad luck at the start. Uh, running Brooke Gal win it that year. But that year, I really, I mean, I counted my chickens before they hatch. I really thought we were going to win it that year. Right. I think it's just having the right horse at the right time. Um, I honestly feel we're going to win it one year. I don't know when, you know, next year, 10 years from now, I don't know. But um, I think, it, you know, if, if I can stay in this sport, you know, for until we win it, I, I really would like to do that. Uh, I know you do a great, great Greg Thompson uh, impression. <laughs> well, hello everybody. Well, this is Greg Thompson here in Redosa, New Mexico. The weather, weather is nice, and it's a beautiful day to be out do here. I, in do I turn like this? Yes. When I do it? Really? You kind of like point at the clouds. <laughs> like you want us to see the clouds. I mean, come on, really, Greg? We know the weather is nice in Redosa. Top horses that you've ever seen? I'd have to probably go with Ochoa. You know, that's a great horse. Uh, I think he's the richest horse in, in AQHA history. Yes. And uh, no, when he won the, the All-American, that was just an, an awesome race. He didn't get away the best, but within two or three jumps, he was out there in front. I talked to Roy Baldias after the race. He said he knew he was the winner from the word go. Uh, you know, that's just that's an experience I would like to to uh, feel one day. What do you think is the greatest performance you've seen on uh, Horse? Well, as you know, I can see just about all the top futurities in person and for the last seven, eight, nine years. I mean, I've been at most racetracks. And I, I say the greatest performance I've seen thus far while I've been a reporter in the quarter horse racing world was PJ Chicken Black's All-American oh, Trial. She went in by like six or seven It lengths. was an amazing, amazing performance. And I, I even... It, it was so good that I showed some people that weren't even in the, the quarter horse racing world look at the performance of this horse and they were just blown away and, and she half track she at least had six, seven links on Yeah, that was it was very impressive. Yes, and very I know I know the argument of course is that uh, there was not a ton of other horses in that race, but I, I don't it don't matter. When you beat the field by that many, I mean it's it's impressive. Rick as a as a jockey, what is the hardest part about the life that you live? That's a good question, Greg. I don't know. Uh, you know, being away from family would be one. You know, it's you, we're on the road pretty often. Um, luckily, I get to spend the whole summer with my family in Redosa, so that's fun. But just being away from the family, you know, kind of it, it's it's a little hard. But you love the sport, and they're very understanding and supportive of what what I do, and I really appreciate that. And uh, another thing would probably be. Not winning as many races as you, as you would like to win. I mean, you know, that sounds kind of uh, selfish, you know, but uh, we're all in this sport to win races. And yeah. a good win clip would be 20, 25%. Absolutely. So think about it. You win two out of every 10 races. Yeah. You know, one out of every five. So that's, it kind of gets to you sometimes, but. Um, you got to make that walk of shame from uh, the where you get off and all the way back to the jocks yes. eight times. And explain to your trainer why you got outrun and you know what happened. And, but a lot of times, you know, you just, you just get outrun. I mean, you just didn't have enough horse and you just to move on to the next race uh, as bad as you wanted to win that race. Right. But besides that, I mean, it's it's a pretty fun, pretty fun game. What is it about this game that keeps you going, keeps you churning it out, keeps you living this lifestyle? You know, like you say, game, it, it feels like 
doesn't really feel like a job to me. It's, it's more of a, I'm getting, you know, I'm making a living doing my hobby. You know, it's it's fun hobby. Um, even if I didn't get paid to do it, I'd probably still be doing it. You know, it's just something that I love. Um, you know, we used to take the month of December and January, part of February off, you know, for, for the winter season. And I just, I crave it. I mean, I'm ready to get back in the saddle and do it again every every spring. You don't want to answer that question. <laughs> so why is it when I call you, Ricky, you're like, hey, Greg, how are you? And then I'm with you and somebody calls you one of your friends, you're like, hey, what's going on, George? Well, I think it's because of hanging around you, the Hispanic culture is wearing off on me. Because, you know, have you ever noticed, like, and I pointed this out to you all the time, that, you know, like, the Hispanic language or the Mexican language is just so passionate. The Spanish language is just such a passion. You can't just say something normal like, hey, how's it going? Everything good? It's got to be, hey, how's it going? No, it's, hey, que paso? <laughs> like I told you, you like got, the word chicken. You gotta put some, some attitude in there. Attitude. No, not attitude. Attitude? Attitude. So, like, the, the thing is. Some excitement. Like, you gotta put some excitement into it. You can't just be like, hey, como está? Exactly. No, 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 no. Nobody sounds like that there. I was like, hey! I went to the store the yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do this, drink. <laughs> and and I've told you multiple times you can't say the word chingon without like going chingon. No, just chingon is boring. You gotta like stretch it. <laughs> chingon, amigo. <laughs>